guys, hope you're doing well. Bit of a different video for you today. Been getting a lot of questions on our Kamana Koda video about the whole logistics of the hike, how you book it, how you get the accommodation and food and whatnot. So we thought we'd walk you through how we booked our trip. There is pretty much just one website you need to go to that has all the information that you could possibly need, but it is a bit confusing to navigate. There is a lot of information on there and the booking process is a bit different to other hikes and accommodation websites. For those of you who are just starting your research, what is the Kamano Koto? The Kamano Koto is an ancient network of trails that branch across the mountainous key peninsula in Japan. A thousand years ago, emperors and nobility walked these wilderness routes as a spiritual passage to the three grand shrines of Kumano. The area is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and parts of the trail network still remain for us modern day pilgrims. The Kumano Kodo has five main routes. Ohechi follows the coastline from Tanabe to Nachi Taisha, but has mostly disappeared with modern development. Iseji passes from Kumano to Ise Shrine through many towns, but only portions of the original trail remain. Kohechi runs from Kumano to Koyasan and is considered long and challenging with many logistical considerations with food and accommodation. The Omani Okugaki route passes Kumano to Yoshino and is also considered a challenging and more dangerous route with few towns along the way. The Nakahachi route is the most popular and well-known route as it remains well preserved and is considered an achievable walk. This is the route that Danny and I took and the one that we'll focus on in this video. The Kumano Koto can be hiked year round. Wakayama is relatively far south in Japan and the mountains are not high enough to get much snowfall. Spring and autumn are both great times to hike with warm weather and pleasant views. Cherries blossom from late March to early April and fall foliage can be seen throughout October and November. Summer can be great, but it can be pretty hot and humid. Dana and I personally hiked the trail in late November. Although the Kumano Koto is not known for its fall foliage, it is a great time to hike the trail nonetheless. All right, so once you're on the computer, you're gonna to go to Google and you're gonna search for Kumano Kodo. Top search result is this website. This site should contain all the information that you need to plan your trip. There are also some great hiking blogs online with photos and personal experiences that will give you a better feel for the trail. But in terms of planning and booking, this is the site. One thing to note though, this site doesn't appear to have any information on the Omini Okugaki route. Uh, it does have information on all four of the other routes but it does seem to focus more on the Nakahachi route as that is the most popular. All right, so initially, before we go through the whole booking process, we're just gonna go through the information that we found the most useful on this website. There's a lot more than what we're gonna go through in this video, but we're just gonna point out what we find the most useful. So when you initially access the website, you're already gonna be on the Kamano Kodo tab. So you're gonna just scroll down to the very bottom and you're gonna select the Kamano Kodo maps. Here you will find detailed maps of the various different routes of the Kamano Kodo. If you scroll down, under each route, you will find a complete map booklet in PDF format. This is a great resource with all the individual maps for that route and also provides you with a lot of other useful information. Dana and I actually printed this off before we left for our trip, but you can actually pick up hard copies of these for free uh, at Tanabe or the Kamano Koto Information Center. And I'm sure you'll be able to find them in other places of Japan as well. So just going back up to the top, we're gonna open the resources tab. So I'm not gonna go through all of these in great detail. I'm just gonna point out the ones that I found the most useful. So the maps and pamphlet page has a lot of additional maps for towns that you'll pass through along your trek. These aren't necessary maps, but are useful in providing additional information about towns. Model itineraries are listed here, and this is a critical resource that you'll need to go through, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Luggage storage and shuttle information can be found here. If you have luggage and you don't want to hike with it, there are services that will store luggage or shuttle your luggage to meet you along your hike, or you can just send it to the very end of your trek and pick it up when you're finished. Danny and I actually traveled very lightweight during this trip to Japan, so we ended up carrying everything with us and we didn't need to use these services but we have used similar Japanese services on other trips and they have been very good. Audio guides are available here. If you scroll down, you'll find a single zip file that has all the audio recordings that you can download and load onto your phone. Don't forget the audio guide map that shows you where to listen to each recording during your hike. Here you'll find a collection of how-to videos that provide some extra information on certain trail logistics, Japanese culture, and Japanese etiquette, which are especially good if this is your first time visiting Japan. So just a couple more things to point out. 
The Places tab has detailed information on the cities and towns you may pass through during your hike. The Lodgings tab has descriptions of the different styles of accommodations you'll find along the trail. We recommend giving this a quick read before starting your booking so you have a general idea of what to expect. So before we go through the actual booking process, we need to figure out which sections we're actually going to hike. We do this on the Model Itineraries page. Model itineraries are sample travel plans to help you organize and plan your trip. You can use them as they are or adjust them to meet your needs. These are not packaged tours, but templates to make planning your trip easier. All itineraries are self-guided, but guides can be requested through the booking system at an extra cost. Be aware that some itineraries count day one as travel from a major city like Osaka or Kyoto, and then have you hike a very short section of the trail. Transport to Tanabe from Kyoto or Osaka is easy with frequent trains and direct buses. For this reason, we recommend staying the night in Tanabe before starting the trail. This will allow you to catch a bus first thing in the morning from Tanabe Station to Takajiri Oji. This is where the Komonokoto Information Center is located, along with the trailhead for the Komonokoto Trail. If you decide to start your pilgrimage from Takajiri Oji, it is a minimum two-day hike to the first shrine of Kumano Hangu Taisha. There are many towns along the way, so where you stay and if you skip any section using local buses is completely up to you. After visiting Hangu Taisha Shrine, hikers generally take a short bus ride to one of the nearby onsen towns to rest. Which town you choose is completely up to you. In the morning, you will take another short bus ride back to the trail to continue your pilgrimage. Here is where people generally get confused when planning this trip, as the trail splits depending on what you want to do. Traditionally, to visit the Kumano Hayatama Taisha Shrine, pilgrims would take a riverboat down the Kumano Gawa River. This can still be done to this day, but needs to be booked well in advance and is only available from March to November. If this traditional riverboat does not interest you, you can continue your trek towards Nachi Taisha Shrine. This section will take you a minimum of two days to hike. Again, there is towns for you to stay at along the way, but generally people stay in Kaguchi. After visiting the beautiful Kumano Nachi Taisha Shrine, you will take a short bus ride to the coastal town of Ki Katsura. Here you can catch a train up the coast to Shingu and visit the third and final shrine, Kumano Hayatama Taisha. If this does not interest you, you can catch a train to any other destination and conclude your pilgrimage here. If you decided to take the traditional riverboat down the Kumano Gawa River, you can take a train from Shingu to Kiketsura Station to visit the third and final shrine, or you can take a bus from Kiketsura all the way back to the first shrine of Kumano Hongu Taisha and then continue your trek to Nachi Taisha Shrine. Generally, if visiting all three shrines of the Kumano Koto, you will need a minimum four days on the trail. Buses are available along most of the route if you want to shorten days or skip certain sections. We recommend looking at the Nakahachi maps along with the model itineraries and helping you work out what you want to hike and how far you want to get each day. Included in the model itinerary is a difficulty rating for each section of the trail. As you can see, you have a lot of say in designing your hike. It can be a bit daunting, but it is also great in that you will get to do a hike that matches your capabilities and enjoyment. Once you've decided which route you want to hike and where you would prefer to stay, it's time to navigate to the reservation site. If you looked at the model itineraries and found one that you were happy to go with, the booking process is a bit simpler. Once on the reservation site, go to the model itineraries page. Scroll down and select the model itinerary you would like to book. Once open, scroll to the very bottom here you can select your start date and any extras you might need. Click view price plan list to view and select an accommodation for each town stay. For those who have a customized itinerary, we need to book through the accommodations page. As an example, we will be looking at the route that we took. Scroll down to the listing of towns. Select the town you would like to stay in and you will see a list of all accommodations in that town. Make sure to find a few you would be happy with as your first preference may not be available for the dates you would prefer. Select your preferred accommodation and price plan. Some accommodations might have multiple room and meal options. Select your preferred date and check in time before sunset. It is important to check in before sunset as you do not want to worry your Japanese hosts. Complete the rest of the required form information and add to cart. 
Booking accommodation with no meals is an option. While we found that most towns either had a very small store in which you can purchase snacks or food, and while we generally saw one small restaurant in each town, we cannot guarantee this will always be the case in each town you want to stay in. Opening and closing times may be difficult to come by, and they may not easily accommodate English-speaking guests. We believe it would be much easier to book accommodation that includes all required meals. Underneath the facts section on the Kamano Travel website, you can find more information about the different types of meal boxes you can request at your accommodation. Repeat this process for each required town stay. One thing to note, some accommodations have certain restrictions and some will not accept reservations far in advance. There are a lot of accommodation options available in Tanabe. Personally, we would recommend you wait to book your accommodation in Tanabe until you have received confirmation from Kumano Travel, just in case any changes need to be made. You can also book accommodation for Tanabe on this website if you would prefer to have it all done at once. If you would like to add on additional services like luggage transport, or include tours or activities like local guides or the traditional boat ride, you can add this to your reservation request as well. Once finished, go to your cart, review your selections, and then select the continue button. Remember, this is not a booking. This is simply a reservation request. Komono Travel will contact the accommodation hosts to see if your requested dates are available. They will then contact you and advise whether your request can be fulfilled or if any changes need to be made. Once everything is finalized, they will request your payment. Until the payment is finalized, the booking is not secured. For a more detailed look at how the reservation process works, go to the homepage and click how to book. This is our reservation from our trip. All these listed as canceled were what we initially requested and then Kumano Travel notified us saying they were unavailable. The ones that we actually book are highlighted. Communications with Kumano Travel are all visible under the My Chat section. As you can see, they asked us some additional questions and requested additional information in our initial conversation. We submitted our request August 20th and had confirmation on August 27th. Cool guys, well that's it. I uh, hope that was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any further questions, just leave them in the comments down below. Uh, we'll try and put as many resources in the video description as well, just links to different maps and bus routes and things that you guys might need uh, when planning your trip. Um, but if you like this video and you wanna see more stuff like this, let us know and uh, we'll try and make them. Cool, thank you, bye.